Hey guys, it's uh, DC here. Um, headed up to the facility and, and just kind of had a few things I thought I would talk about that um, seem to always keep getting brought up with both um, not just our, our athletes and parents, but also you know our, our CrossFit side of the at the facility too. Um, you know, one of the things that parents and, and athletes always hit us up with is the number one question we get asked is, you know. My, uh, how do, do you guys teach speed? How can my kid get faster? Um, and then on the CrossFit side, you know, a lot of them that come in kind of with the, the growth of how CrossFit is, they they don't know how really awesome the, the community and how good the, you know, the coaches and, and that stuff can be. All they really see is the, the workouts. You know, a lot of them are starting to come in, trickle in from Reebok commercials or the workouts that, you know, they find on YouTube or, or even off of, uh, you know, ESPN showing of the games, and which is great and everything, but, you know, both those people are kind of categorized into the, the same thing, our younger athletes who, who want to get stronger and our CrossFit athletes that really want to uh, do the more intense movements and workouts. And, and one of the issues that really both of them have is they lack the, the overall strength, not just, uh, you know, the younger athletes and a lot of beginner crossfit lack the work capacity too, but both of them lack the overall strength to really get that um, get that type of intense training that they're looking after, and, and yet they don't really realize that. Um, you know, we kind of have a few. There's a few strength guidelines that um, that we try to follow at the facility. Uh, for the most part, it changes and varies between a uh, you know between athletes and between. Um, our CrossFit clients, but just for example, on our athlete side, we teach you to get faster and, and, and increase your speed by getting you stronger up to a certain degree. Um, you know, for our younger guys, you start increasing your strength by by increasing work capacity. They're hit with tons of complexes. Um, we don't even really let them touch a barbell. It's tons of body weight, kettlebells, sandbag, farmer's walk, sled drags, prowler pushes. Uh, stuff to increase the work capacity and teach the body how to to gain strength and how to use the uh, use strength correctly um, Once they kind of progress to that then they get hit with the, the basic compound movements with some jumps and, and sprints and, and that type of stuff in there, but you know we don't really start focusing on um, Quote-unquote speed and, and plyometric work until our athletes have at least uh, roughly around a two times their body weight uh, box squat, and that's even tougher than than, than a free squat. And that's um, kind of what makes it so so efficient. Is it, the, the easiest way to get faster and more explosive is to cover more ground with every step. Um, the easiest way to do that is to get stronger. Granted, there becomes a certain um, degree of difference and degree of. Um, curve uh, basically curve where you know results once you hit a certain strength level don't really happen anymore uh, in terms of speed what does happen is <clears throat> they continue to get stronger but it doesn't uh, play any type of positive effect to the um, to their speed and power or it can even start hindering it because of the size that they're putting on to to continue to go um, on the CrossFit side kind of the same thing we make sure that they have a good base level of strength before we start teaching them advanced movements. You know, kind of what makes us different is a lot of other places will teach the advanced movements in scaled down versions, um, and we won't even do that. For example, um, just because the, the the risk of injury is a, a little too high, and, and kind of the reward to risk ratio isn't high enough for for us to justify it. Um, you know, one of the big things that that everybody sees is increasing the work. Uh, done in the by by adding like a kip to certain exercises, uh, stuff like that. Kipping isn't a bad thing, but the problem is, is is even if your kip's great and even if you can bang out a thousand of them, if you don't have the strength to support that the landing in the bottom position of a kipping pull up, for example, or to to stay stabilized and stay tight, then the the joints are what take the beating. So the kip isn't the bad thing. The bad thing is they don't have the strength to to be able to. Uh, sorry, hit the phone. Uh, they don't have the strength to be able to um, do it correctly. 
and so they kind of look like they flop like a fish and if you actually watch them up close their shoulders look like they're about to dislocate every single time that they kind of bottom out in that bottom position um, what we do is kind of we won't even teach you the kip until you can bang out three four five straight dead hang pull-ups now you have the strength to be able to to not just kip and kip your pull-ups a ton and stay on the bar for a long time but also to make sure that they get uh, exactly you know they have the strength to stay healthy which is the key um, we have we have guys that come in and, and we hammer with them that way and, and get that debt that pull up increased you know they five six um, straight dead hang pull ups and then once we teach the kip and they get decently efficient with it one two weeks at the most and they're up in the 20 25 um, even some guys in the 30 range in terms of how many uh, you know pull-ups they can do by just adding that kipping motion because they have that strength background behind it so make sure you know when you're training uh, if you're training yourself or others that you really focus on the, the work capacity and strength side before you kind of get into the the fun stuff and you know the the cool stuff that, that you see everywhere that a lot of people shouldn't be doing but do um, <clears throat> which is, may give them a short-term benefit, but in the long run, it's really not going to help them out. Um, so that's kind of really all I got today is kind of get that work capacity. If you have any questions, drop them below. Love to, uh, if you want some examples of all the stuff we do work capacity-wise on our CrossFit or our athlete side program, uh, comment below and, and let me know, and I'll get you some ideas out there. Uh, if you are interested in kind of learning a little more how we do it, um, feel free to uh, check out the website, genesisstrengthseminar.com. we got one coming up in April. I'd love to see you there. Have a great day.